Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. And uh, without much ado because I can see that uh, our time is so much spent or rather well spent, I want us to move straight on to our text today uh, which will come from the book of Genesis 26. Genesis 26, indeed, this is one chapter that uh, we will continue to talk about even for the remaining part of this year. Because our main, the theme of the year has been the digging of our wells. Amen? And the theme of the week has been discovering and preserving the wells in our lives. Discovering and preserving the wells in our lives. Media, if you don't mind, you could give us Genesis 26, 18 to 22 or thereabout. There we go. If we can, we could read together. Uh, one, two, let's go. Isaac reopened. Which the Philistines had stopped. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named Sena. Saying the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. The Lord has given us room and we will flourish in there. You can underline that in your in your text or in your Bibles. Father, we ask of you to speak to us in a simple yet clear way so that, Lord, we can partake of that which you have prepared for us this morning in Jesus' name. Indeed, we have been reminded about this one man, Isaac, the son of Abraham, and what transpired. If you could read the previous verses from there, you can see how Isaac came to find himself in the land of Gera. And therefore, we see him redigging the wells that had already been done by his father, uh, Abraham. But unfortunately, we find that the first two wells were contentious. And actually, uh, his servants quarreled with the servants of, uh, of the other side. And uh, what happened? They ended leaving the wells unto them until they dug the third well. And that is when, actually, the enemy stopped bothering them. And uh, I just wanted to bring to attention that uh, even in our daily life, we will continue uh, encountering some challenges. And these challenges may come in one way or the other. Such that you know that uh, indeed you are doing the right thing, but then you find opposition. You are walking in the right direction, but then you find uh, getting some opposition. And this is exactly what happened to Isaac and his servants and rather in his family. But finally, God made room. If we could get verse 22 again. God made room for God made room for Isaac. And the last part says, uh, rather let me read, it, read the whole part. He moved on from there and dug another well. And no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth. Saying, now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. That even when we get uh, blessed by the Lord, we attract the attention of the enemy. Actually, that is what we were reminded. It was one of the things that we were reminded during the, the men's week, that when the blessings of the Lord come upon you, you will 
somehow attract the attention of the enemy. And you know, the enemy will not come just to, uh, to smile at you. He will come meaning to destroy, to steal, and even to, cream, uh, to kill the dreams of the Lord, uh, the blessings that the Lord has brought you away. Of which we get to be reminded of John 10.10, 10, the, the primary work of the enemy. But I thank God that uh, the part B of John 10.10 10 reminds us that uh, Jesus came that we may have life and have it in abundance. And that is the desire of God. To see each one of us live a victorious life. Yes, it is true. Challenges will be there. Sometimes it will seem like it's like God has forgotten us. But one thing we know from his word, he has given us an assurance that he will never leave us. He will never. And therefore, we can remain still. We can stand still as we are reminded in the book of Psalms 46 verse 10 and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm not ignorant of the fact that some of us here, we might have been going through challenges and we don't know what is happening in our lives. I'm not ignorant that some of us have been praying for breakthroughs. Some of us have been praying for our families, yet nothing has been coming forth. But again, we ought to be reminded that that which you have been doing and it is pleasing before God, we should continue doing it in the name of Jesus. So what am I saying this morning? We should never give up. We should never give up because he who knows us best is actually coming through for us. You have been looking for a job. Don't give up. It is coming. You have been praying for healing. Don't give up. It is coming. You have been praying for your family. Don't give up. The breakthrough is coming in the name of Jesus. And therefore, even from what we have read today, uh, the text from uh, Genesis uh, uh, 26 about Isaac redigging the wells. We can still go back to our families, to our roots, and try to identify what is it that our four forefathers used to do, and it used to be a blessing. The wells provided life for Abraham and his household. And therefore, even in our own families, we know that there are those wells that our forefathers, our parents used to do, used to dig, used to dwell in. And we can go back and we redig them. And I know that they shall be of benefits to our lives. The wells, I'm talking about the wells of holiness. I'm talking about the prayer, the prayer life of our forefathers because I know some of them were prayerful. I know that they were, they, they, some of them were great uh, disciples of Christ. And those were wells. And we can desire to go back to them. In our own individual families, we can still go back and try to dig, identify with those wells that indeed worked well for our, our parents. And we can redig them. Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed? Are you getting blessed? Amen, amen, amen. And therefore, we want to move on and see what is it that uh, we need to do as we continue to redig those wells. And therefore, that brings me to my title of the message today, which is Making Room for God. Making Room for for God. As believers, we cannot, we cannot, I, I, I repeat, we cannot just wish the things of God away. As believers, we got to do that which we have been taught to do to please our God. Indeed, what we are saying is we can look for every way to, deep, to deepen our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So that these wells, even as we redig them, then they can be of benefit to us. Praise be to God. And therefore, we don't want to be like that wicked person. As believers, we don't want to be ignorant. You know, there are people who say that uh, there is no God. Far from it. What does Psalm 10 verse 4 remind us? 
Psalm, 4, uh, Psalm 10, verse 4. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. That this wicked person, in his thoughts and in his mind, in his life, there is no space, there is no room for, for God. We have seen that God made room for Isaac in 20, uh, Genesis 26 verse 22. Now we are saying as believers we want to make room for, for God. And for us to do that effectively then, we must be reminded of some truths. We must, there are some truths that we must hide in our hearts. We need to have these convictions that indeed, uh, uh, will, uh, the, and the convictions and the, and the truths will help us. One, if we have drifted from our deep convictions about God and who he is, we will stop making room for him in our minds, in our hearts, and even in our lives. We need to make sure convictions about God are strong so that we keep our relationship with him our top priority. No matter what we go through in life, challenges or circumstances should never affect negatively our relationship with God. That is to say whatever we go through, the challenges or the problems that come, come our way. In fact, they should deepen our relation. That is the time that we should seek the Lord more and, and more. And therefore, let, let us not allow the challenges that come our way affect negatively our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And therefore, one of the truths or one of the convictions that we should have in our hearts uh, we should hide in our hearts is that God is a guardian of our life and soul. God is the guardian of our life and uh, our soul. That the Lord is always there for us. You can maybe probably in your, on your own, you could read Psalm 121. Psalm 121, 1 to, to 8. 1 to 8. We need to know that God guards us from every evil. He guards us from, uh, from the very life. He guards us when you live and when you return. He guards us when, uh, now, and he will continue to guard us always. But nice what we say The Lord is always there with us. Psalm 121, uh, verse 1 to 8. I've not read it, but I've just tried to paraphrase it. And you can read that on your own because of time. But nice what we say now the, uh, the conviction or the truth number two that we ought to have in our, in our heart is that God watches over our lives. God watches over our lives. We can read Psalm 1 and verse 6. Psalm 1 verse 6, if media you could give us that. There you go. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. I mean, we have just read about the wicked man who says there is no, no God. But here we are. The Lord watches over his own, his own people. And therefore, we don't want to emulate that wicked man because we know that wickedness will lead to our destruction. Amen. Amen, amen. Having a relationship with God means God is watching over you. As believers, we have an assurance that God cares for us and he means well for each one of us. So I want to remind us this morning that God means well for all of us. And that is why he brought you here. That is why the Lord God brought us here this morning so that indeed he can speak to us. So that indeed he can encourage us. So that he can remind us it is well. Even times as such as this when uh, in, our, in our nation we are talking about the cost of living. I mean our bishop the other day gave us a, uh, uh, such a, a powerful statement that we should keep continue doing. And do you remember what happened yesterday? But our bishop told us what? We should do what? We should canusha that and say that regardless. We know that our God is well able. We know that our God will take us where he wants us to go. 
we know that the Lord will watch over our steps. We will not sleep hungry. We will not go without, uh, I mean, without clothes. We will not remain struggling forever. The challenges that we face are just temporal. I know that everything will work out for good for us because once again, God loves us. The third truth that we should hide in our hearts is to know that God hears us. God hears us. Yani tukiomba tu mungu na. This is what uh, uh, Isaiah 65 verse 24 reminds us this morning. Even before they call out to me, I will answer. Just even before you utter a word, God knows our intentions. And if the intentions are good, he will go ahead and answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear them. Oh, hallelujah. While we are still praying like we were. And I thank God for our praise and worship team this morning. Actually, they have just confirmed the message that the Lord wanted us to hear this morning. They were singing about the presence of the Lord. And they say the presence of the Lord is here. Praise be to God. And that is what we want to remind ourselves, that God hears our prayer. Even before we came to church this morning, I know we went before the Lord and we told him something. We prayed about something. The answer is coming because that is an assurance from his own word. My faithful, my faithful God, answer me when I call out to you. Give me less from my trouble. Have mercy on me. Hear my prayer. That was the prayer of the psalmist in the psalm, in the book of Psalm 4, verse 1. Amen? God can give us less from our trouble. This is one of the reasons we need to stay close to God. When we are going through hard times, instead of compromising our time with him. So at this juncture, I want you to just ask yourself, could it be in any way you have compromised? You have compromised. Says that to me, says that I am boy among you. Yani, yani, me kuwa tu ni kiyomba na i. I'm boy yendi vile, but I swear to say, far he has not forgotten us. He has not forgot. He has not forgotten us, and therefore, don't compromise. Continue doing that which is right, which is good. Galatians six nine reminds us that we should never get weary. We should never get weary of doing. That which is God. Because in the right time, we know what will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it is hot, but we can encourage one another. Let's be good keepers. Amen. Hallelujah. We should also desire. This is the truth, the truth number four, conviction number four. We should know that obeying the Lord makes us happy. It should always make us happy. I mean, it should not be something else. When you are walking in the ways of the Lord, you should, you should fight that joy. You should fight that joy. Having the right relationship with God means we will never, we will never run dry. We are talking about uh, digging the wells. And therefore, having the right relationship with our God, then our wells will never run dry. Hallelujah. Buana Yesu Sifa. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, number five, God helps us win our battles. That the battles that we go through on a day to day, uh, on a daily basis, those battles belong to our God. They are not our battles. We have, in fact, we have just sung one song here, that victory, amen, victory surrounds us. And that is what we should have in mind, that that victory God is fighting for us. Because what he says in, in Psalm 7 verse 10 uh, the Bible reminds us that the Most High God is like a shield that keeps me safe. He saves me. He saves those whose hearts are honest. Oh, hallelujah. So the battles belong to who? To God. 
Amen, amen. Sorry, I'm just learning after time and uh, uh, there's so much to cover. But again, Pastor Brian, um, if I don't, I know you give me another chance. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Uh, number six, God gives mercy and comfort when our souls are troubled. God gives mercy and comfort when our souls are troubled. God is there for you to give mercy and comfort when your soul is troubled. Sometimes when our bodies are full of physical pain, we can neglect our spiritual lives and forget that our souls need healing along with our physical bodies. We begin to think the root of our problems is physical instead of spiritual. God can heal the trouble in our souls so that we have tremendous faith even in the midst of physical pain. And therefore, if you are here and you have been that, having that physical uh, pain, just know that our good Lord is our healer. He is attending to that physical pain. It can be an emotion pain. It could be otherwise, but God is attending. He works 24-7 to make sure that everything that concerns his own is well addressed. 24-7. While the work of the enemy is to do otherwise, our Lord and Savior is always there to make sure that he gives us mercy and comfort when our souls are troubled. We could read Psalm 6, but this, of course, this is, is on your own because of time. Uh, Psalm 6, you could read 1 to 5. You can also read 8 and 9. That is on your own. That is regarding God giving comfort. And the last truth that I want us to hide, that we ought to hide in our hearts, is that God takes note of our pain and does something about it. That is more or less the same as what we have seen in number six. Therefore, God made room for Isaac. And we are talking about making room for God ourselves as believers. Then, what is it that we need to do so that we can uh, create that room, we can that make that room successful for our God? We need to look down, deep down inside our hearts. We need to re-examine our hearts. What is it? How, how is your heart like? Tremble and do not sin. When you are in bed, look deep down inside yourself. This is from the book of Psalm, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse, verse 4. And be silent. That even when we are sleeping, hallelujah, deep in our hearts, we need to ask ourselves some questions. Knowing what lies ahead for you won't be cumbered with being a Christian or become spiritual dull indifferent, but you'll be anxious to follow the example of those who receive all that God has promised them because of their strong faith and patience. We need to have that strong faith. We need to have that patience that God has not forgotten us. He's doing something about our situations. He's doing something about our circumstances. Therefore, as we continually dig in these wells, we know that God will always come through, through for us. Praise be to God. God makes our lives secure. God makes our lives set, secure. And of course, he brings joy to us. God brings joy into our lives. Therefore, I've skipped a lot because I want us to just highlight some of the things that we can do. We, I mean, we have talked about hiding some truths in our hearts. But what are the action points as believers? There is something that we can do there is something we can do to encounter our Heavenly Father. And one of them is that we can encounter God through the receiving of his presence. Again, the present worship here has sung about the presence of the Lord. That at all times, it, we should make it our desire to be closer to our Heavenly Father as much as we can. Seeking his presence at all times. Seeking his presence at all times will make a difference in our lives. Scripture says in the book of Psalms 139, sorry, and verse 7, 
Psalm 139, verse 7. The Bible says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Where can I? Where can I? Where can I hide or rather free from your presence? God's presence has been made free available to us by sacrifice of Jesus, our pure and our spotless lamb. When we become Christians, we, made, we are made totally new as we will be reminded in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. And therefore, we can, when we seek the presence of God, we are able to have a proper fellowship with him. Praise be to God. Seeking the presence of God should be our desire as believers. Because when we do so, we will live victoriously. We will live victorious life in the name of Jesus. And therefore, what is it that uh, we can do? Once again, from the book of six, Psalm 16, verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of what? At your right hand are precious for levermore. Yes. Yes. In the presence of God, there is that fullness of joy. I mean, where, as believers, why, why should we go elsewhere? Why, why should we do otherwise other than seeking the presence of the Lord? It is my prayer that this morning, even as we leave this sanctuary and this compound today, we can at least resolve one thing. That in spite of everything, I can seek the presence of the, of the Lord. Bona is a Persifa. We can also do something else, and that is we can desire to encounter God through our worship. We can desire to have an encounter with God through our worship. Wow. And what a powerful session of praise and worship we have had this morning. May God continue to bless our praise and worship team. May the good Lord continue to open your doors. May the God, good God continue to come through for you. May he answer you even before you call. In the name of Jesus. You have been a blessing to us. I just have a testimony. Now that we are talking about the praise and worship. One day, the praise and worship team uh, visited our home. Uh, that time, Tulikuwa Pandeili Achini. And uh, the group, the team was led by... Pastor Millicent, and of course our Pastor Brian. Uh, I don't know whether you can recall that. And uh, uh, there were quite a number of them. And they just came to have fellowship with us as a family. And let me tell you, brethren, there are some declarations that these men and women of God made in our house, in our family. And surely God has been faithful. We have seen them come to be one after the other. Time may fail us that I may not, I may not be able to give that testimony. But what I'm saying is that the team has been a blessing. Even the praise and worship team here has been a blessing to all of us. Amen? Amen. And so, can we also continue praying for them? That indeed God will continue to use them amazingly. Amen? Encountering God through our worship. Psalm 29 verse 2 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his of, of holiness. Praise be to God. Isaiah 12 verse 5 says, Sing praises to the Lord for he has done gloriously. Let this he made known all the earth. May the world allowed you change as a result of your worship. May we desire that that will be our lifestyle. Seeking his presence. Praising the Lord. Giving him the worship that he deserves in our daily walk. That is a well of worship. And it can change our lives tremendously. It can change our lives tremendously. Number three, we can encounter God through 
the reading of his word through the scripture. Through the scripture. So can we make it a habit of reading, going to the word of God as much as we can? We can do this when you are going to our places of work. Tukiwa kwa magari, tukifika pale kazini kama kwa magari, ya huku pata nafasi ya kusoma, kama huku pata nafasi ya kusoma neno nyumbani. Can we make it a habit of going back to the word of God? There is, that word of God is powerful. I mean, one word from God can change your whole life. Bonesu wapewesifa. Praise be to God. One word. I mean, you don't have to read the whole chapter. Just one word from the Bible can immensely change your life. Probably you have been praying for a breakthrough. Then you go to the word of God and you read. And that word opens your eyes. It gives you direction. It tells you this is the way my son, my daughter. Follow it. And there you are, you'll find your miracle. So can we make it a habit of reading the word of the Lord? Jeremiah 15 verse 16. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. That is concerning the reading of, your, of the word of God. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart for I am called by your name. O oh Lord, God of hosts. In the word of the Lord, that is where we get to know that our weaknesses are turned into strength. That is when we find that if we are about to give up, we are encouraged not to give up. It is in the word of God that if we have been praying for peace, that when we read we get that peace that we have been looking for. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Allow me also to read Isaiah 55 verse 11. Because I can see my time is well spent. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Can we read together? One, two. So is my word that goes out. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When God speaks to us, to you and me, it is never in vain. All what we need to do is to have that strong faith, the conviction that yes, this is the Lord who has said it and I can take it and run with it and I can rest assured that he who is the maker of heaven and earth and everything else he is in control. Reading the word of the Lord day in, day out. Finally, could we talk of thanksgiving? Could we talk of thanksgiving? How else we can redig the well of thanksgiving? We can encounter God through the well of thanksgiving. Enter his gates, Psalm 100, Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. And of course you can read Psalm 100, 100 from verse 1 and you continue. Thanksgiving is a gift given to us by the good and loving nature of our Heavenly Father. In and out of every season of life, we have a reason to give thanks because we serve a holy, faithful, good, and loving God. We serve the only king who would lay his life for his unworthy. I mean, God gave his best for us. And we ought to be thankful. Every small detail in our lives, we cannot just assume. It is true you woke up this morning. Did you remember to tell God thank you? Last night you were able to eat something and sleep well. Did you tell God thank you? You have received good news this morning. Or whatever kind did you tell God thank you? And therefore, telling God thank you should be our lifestyle. Day in, day out. Having a thankful heart. God is pleased with such. 
God is pleased with such. That in all seasons. Yes, we ask ourselves sometimes, even when we are mourning, we are supposed to say thank you. Well, it is not about us. It is about God himself, the giver of that life. And therefore, we can still say thank you. There are so many things we can look and tell God thank you. Ephesians 5 and verse 20 says, we are to be giving thanks, or rather giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always, let me read it from the screen, always giving thanks to God, the Father, for everything. You can underline that, for everything. So now we know it. It is for? Yes. When things are working our way or not, whether things are working our way or not, we should be thankful. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of time, the well of prayer, you could read that on your own, the, prayer of, uh, the well of prayer, and the well of, um, the well of prayer, we could look at Jeremiah 33, verse 3, but in, indeed we have looked at that uh, in another uh, scripture, the Psalms, but you could still read it on your own because of time. And we can also encounter God through faith. Through faith. Through faith. Through faith. Through faith, I want to repeat it. Through faith. Hallelujah. Yes, having that strong faith in our Heavenly Father will make all the difference. Abraham, the father of faith. And we know his story. Why not? Scripture would remind us in, in Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible. There we go. To praise him. For whoever will draw near to God must believe that he exists. And he rewards those who seek him. So many times I've heard, Pastor, I've been praying for this. I've been praying for this. And it is not happening. Is it that you are about to give up? Are you giving up on God? What to praise him is having faith in him. Because he will bring it to be in his own right time. By faith we come into the throne room of God and we have an authentic transformational encounter with our creator. By faith we accept the free gift of eternal salvation. By faith we believe we will one day live in heaven with our father. And it is by faith that we seek the fullness of relationship available to us on, on earth. So brethren as we wind up as we wind up this morning we have been, talk, been talking about an, having an amazing journey with our Father, with our God. And this can only be if we stand right with him. If we take that bold step and say, yes, Lord, here I am. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And from today, I pray that you may come into my heart and change my life. I desire to live a victorious or rather to have a closer walk with you, O oh God. That you may hold my hand and walk with me. And I will hold on to your promises. Because you have said you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. And this starts with the moment we invite Christ into our hearts. Could you be here this morning? Could you be here this morning? And this is your desire. To have a fresh start with God. To have a new beginning with, the, with our heavenly maker. This is the right time. You can just raise up your hand and we will just pray wherever you are. You can just raise up your hand. Rather, you can still come forward. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. I mean the Lord is waiting on us. If you are there, don't harden your heart. 
Bwana Yesu apewe siva jameni. Yes, he's waiting on us. He's knocking on our doors. Are we ready to open? Are we ready to open that door for, for him to come in? Bwana Yesu apewe siva. And therefore we can rest in the presence of our heavenly father. We can allow his love to lay a foundation of grace, joy, and peace and purpose in our hearts. The, books, the, uh, the word of the Lord in the book of Jeremiah 29, 13 reminds us that you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, let us not harden our hearts. Freely, freely, we can open. He's ready to walk with us. Even as I invite us to rise up. As I invite us to rise up. You can still come even after the service and see any of us. We are ready to pray. We are ready to pray with you. Because it is the desire of God that indeed we live a life that is present before him. Oh, hallelujah. Bwana pewesifa. Bwana tukuzwe. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bwana tunakuinua na tunakushukuru adhuri ya leo kwa maana wewe ni mwaminifu. You can take some men, some moment just one or two minutes and start thanking God. Help him. Ask of him. Ask of the Lord to help you to hide those convictions that we have talked about this morning, to hide those convictions in our hearts, to have the truths that indeed our God is good, that our God cares for us, that when we call, he hears us, that indeed we can trust him because he's dependable and he's well able to address every concern that we, have, we could be having this morning in the name of Jesus. So just take one or two minutes and thank God for that. Let our thanksgiving be a sweet aroma to our Heavenly Father this morning. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my Father, my God, this morning, we want to thank you and I to bless your glorious name. Because indeed, Lord, there is none like you. You are our Father and our God. Thank you, Lord, because you mean well for each one of us, our Father. And here this morning, our Father, we believe that your presence has made all the difference, our Father. You, you have spoken to us, oh God. You have reminded us, our Father, on the ways that we need to redeem, on the bold steps that we ought to take, our Father, even as we desire to draw closer and walk near to you, our Father. Your word reminds us that when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us, Abba Father. And this is an assurance, O Jehovah God, that we can indeed, we can indeed, we can indeed trust you. We can have faith in you in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh, my Father, my God, I pray that our lives will never be the same again. I pray this morning, O oh God, that our families will never be the same again, O oh God. I pray, my Father, my God, that our church will never be the same again, O oh God. I pray, Jehovah God, that indeed our nation will never be the same again, O oh God. Because, Jehovah God, you are doing something new. Lord, you are doing something new in our lives. You are doing something new in this nation, O oh God. You are doing something, Abba Father, in the body of Christ. For the glory and honor of your dear name. So we bless you and we honor you, O oh God. We magnify you are good name because there is none like you. We love you, Father, and we, are low, we adore you this morning. Be exalted and be magnified, O God, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We can appreciate the Lord. Amen, amen. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord give you victory. May the good Lord do you good.